What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Nightly Offensive. As you can see, I am not in my typical studio, and that's because uh, I've been on and off bed rest for the last few days. I had a pretty serious injury. I'm going back to the hospital tonight, uh, but I'm on the good stuff, and uh, that's given me enough energy to be able to pump this out. And we've got a great show for you guys. We've got to talk about a lot of things that people don't want to talk about. Uh, there's a lot of people that are very vocal on one side in the right wing. And it's uh, about to get us involved in a major conflict, possibly with Iran, as our leaders are gearing up and preparing uh, for a counteroffensive after some of our bases were attacked by Iranian-backed militants and our U.S. Navy actually intercepted rockets that were fired from Iranian-backed militants on Israel. And we're going to have to break this whole thing down because on one hand, you have the grifters that are like, this is World War III. World War III is going to begin. And we're not there yet. Uh, but then if you shift over... We are at a point where, once again, we are fighting one of Israel's proxy wars while we are still in a proxy war with Russia. Now, the reason why this is important is because Iran and Russia are allies strategically, militarily, as well as with China. And the fact that Israel's campaign to destroy Hamas has already expanded far past Gaza, okay, far past revenge, far past uh, defense to killing over 5,000 Palestinians, mostly civilians, while the leadership of Hamas is actually in Doha, in Qatar, not to mention the fact that they're bombing Lebanon, Jordan, and even, of course, there's some conflicts with Egypt. So uh, Israel is, is our greatest ally. And of course, when I say our greatest ally, it's our greatest ally to help us get involved in conflicts that don't benefit our country at all, zero. Uh, and uh, no, I'm not like an anti, you know, Israel guy. This is not an anti-Jew podcast or anything like that. I'm just a pro-American podcast. And I don't think that our allegiance should be to anyone except for God in this country. And you know, people have gone crazy. You know, they've gone nuts because over the weekend, uh, Greta Thunberg, Greta Thunberg, our favorite climate activist, decided to weigh in on the Palestinian Hamas conflict. And everyone's got to weigh in these days, right? And she said... I stand with Gaza on her social media post, and she ended up deleting this according to the Daily Mail. This is really funny. After critics claimed that the stuffed octopus that she had in the photo could be viewed as anti-Semitic symbol. She says the toy helps her with her autism. The only thing I like about Greta is that she has autism, but it's the bad kind of autism. Like many of you watching the show have the good autism. She has the bad kind where she can't even stand against Israel in an effective way. So she uploads this. Now, what's the craziest part about the story is uh, she did have this little uh, octopus uh, that was in the background, and uh, Jews and Israel sympathizers were quick to point out that it was actually a anti-Semitic trope related to this image from World War II, which was that Jews have their tentacles uh, in every institution around the world, in that um, she was putting the octopus out there because people had had mirrored and said octopus means uh, Jewish control. Like, I will be completely honest with you. I do think it's really crazy that um, Jewish people saw a stuffed animal of an octopus and immediately thought that somebody was talking about them controlling every institution around the world. It seems a bit defensive. You know, like if you're like, hey, could you give me a dollar? You're like, I don't have a bunch of one dollars on me because I'm going to a strip club. It's like, oh, cool, man. I didn't I didn't ask you if you ha why you had a bunch of dollars on you. I just asked if you had a dollar. I was trying to buy a, a can of Coke. Oh, oh, Coke? You don't think I'm – you think I'm buying Coke at the strip club and I'm using one dollars at the strip club? It's like, no, 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 dude. I didn't say that. I just – it's kind of weird, right? When you have when like you don't say anything anti-Semitic, you don't even claim that Jews control the world. There's no claims made at all in the photo. It just said uh, to free Pal or stand with Palestine, and then the Jewish lobby is convinced that she was trying to communicate to the world that Jews hold disproportionate amounts of power in major institutions like banks, education, uh, universities, uh, you know, universities and education. Um, the Hollywood, etc. So I think that's crazy because obviously I just saw the stuffed animal. But everyone's inventing an enemy now. Everyone's got to take a side, right? Everybody wants you to be on the Palestine or the Israel side. Uh, and unfortunately for me, it's like I am not on 
either side. But I don't see how this ends well for Hamas. I don't see this ends well for Palestinians. You can tweet out all you want. You know, I stand with Palestine. I stand with Palestine. And uh, it's not going to do anything to them. They're just going to get blown up. And their children are going to die. And they're going to kill more Israelis. And to those of you who are out here that are like, oh, well, Elijah, there are good sides in, sides in wars. Yes, there are good sides sometimes in wars. There's no perfect side in a war. But... Uh, you know, it is really interesting. You're like, well, wh why, why don't you f stand with Israel? It's like, well, my brother in Christ, this is a conflict going back thousands of years, right, between Arabs and, and Jews. And there's a, a lot of questions going on here. And don't forget, too, that Jews got kicked out of their own homeland for, uh, you know, financing sort of like a coup or a resistance against the Roman Empire. So I know it's not common for Jews to subvert the people that they are living under their control, but that's what happened. And it's a very, it's been a lot of conflict, at least uh, since, you know, several hundred AD. So I'm not going to get into that. What I do want to point out the fact is that this conflict went from being a defense of Hamas, a defense against Hamas, to a uh, ethnic cleansing of Palestinians Somehow we're supposed to celebrate that civilians are dying. You know, a friend of mine, a lot of friends of mine uh, are just making grave mistakes and are really, really doing poorly when it comes to having opinions on this issue. Um, a friend of mine, I'm not speaking poorly of him, Brandon Tatum shared a video of uh, someone said someone shared a video of a um apartment complex in Gaza being leveled by a rocket and said now they're targeting like civilian apartment complexes. He retweeted it and said, good. Now we just disagree on that because I don't think it's good. And I think that what Israel's doing and why, why I don't think it's good. I don't even like Hamas and I don't even, I'm not even a big, you know, Palestinian pro-Palestinian guy at all. And I don't hate Israel either. I just think uh, when you start bombing apartment buildings, it's sort of similar to when you block the roads for your protests, which we'll get into in a little bit. You just lose sympathy, right? So when Israel says they're trying to defend themselves against a terrorist group and they start blowing up churches and killing Christians in shelter to the point that it even gets Charlie Kirk. Did you see that? It got Charlie Kirk to weigh in uh, on, on this. I'm going to bring this up here for a second. Things are getting so bad that Charlie Kirk of Turning Point USA has actually decided to weigh in um, and speak out against this. And I think it's absolutely crazy when the violence from, uh, let me see, here we go, let me bring this up. The violence has gotten so crazy that Charlie Kirk is speaking out against Israel's actions. And he is getting accused of being anti-Semitic. I mean, octopus, they have eight tentacles. Uh, you know what they say, right? How many tickles does it take to make an octopus laugh? Tentacles, ten tickles, right? Tentacles. Uh, Charlie Kirk, I'll bring this up on a, on bigger here, uh, said, "Until now, I refrain from tweeting about the damage done to this 12th century Greek Orthodox church at uh, Saint uh, Porphyrius. Porphyrius. I don't know how to say that. Sorry, uh, Porphyrius in Gaza after last week's hospital fiasco." I wanted to wait for more facts to be established, but now seems confirmed that Israel did actually bomb a building adjacent to the church, killing Christians who were sheltering there, including the family of Justin Amash. Frankly, it is wrong that there was substantially, uh, let me see, um, Brian, I'm going to pull you out of here. Let me see. Thank you. Uh, accidents happen in war. Not only that, but Hamas loves to use soft targets as staging grounds and human shields so they can scream Israeli atrocities after strikes. Nevertheless, I've been disappointed by Israel's response. What intelligence was Israel responding to? What target were they going after that justified putting a historic church in danger? Israel says the church blast is under investigation, but contrition and a full accounting should be the top of Israel's priorities. Israel quickly apologized recently when it mistakenly targeted an Egyptian position. Christians around the world are Israel's number one ally, and if a Christian church were targeted, we need to know exactly why and how. I do love this tweet here from Richard Hananiah that said, it's, it's like, it's so funny, right? Charlie Kirk says, nobody is a greater ally to Israel and Jews than Christians. Unfortunately, Charlie doesn't realize Jews uh, don't really like Christians. They don't like us. Uh, they actually kind of hate us. They spit on us when we're there. They don't want our churches being built. They don't really want us there. Uh, they don't, they don't like us being in their country, even on pilgrimages. It's, it's just not what they want. 
And it's sort of like this weird fetish that the evangelical right has with a foreign country. It reminds me of the left's obsession with Ukraine, where it's just like, doesn't even make sense. It's just like, why do you care so much about this foreign country? There was this graph that Jews have a negative 40 favorable view for evangelical Christians, while evangelical Christians have a positive 39 towards Jews. And he said this will never stop being funny. You can look at the full graph there. But I think that is funny. I think I think it's actually hilarious, right? Is that like Charlie's waking up in real time. He's like, he sees Israel bomb a church to claim to fight Islamic terrorism. They kill a bunch of Christians that were sheltering in place. And he's like, wait a second. Huh. Is this real war really about, about uh, fighting Hamas? Is this war really about uh, terrorism? Hmm. Well, Charlie, I've got bad news for you. Uh, Israel is not uh, our ally uh, in, in any re regard. They spy on us. They've killed many of our soldiers over the years. Uh, they um, do espionage. They sell our trade secrets to other countries. Uh, they sell our scientific research. And on top of that, they also hate our national religion, Christianity. And they have a net negative. Like they, We love them for no other reason than the fact that bad theology teaches that we need to love Israel. But they, people get confused on what that means. I don't think that was talking about this state of Israel. I don't think we should be against Israel, though. I'm going to be completely honest. I am not on the anti-Israel team. I'm just not on the pro-Israel team, right? I think that, that that's a needs to be a demarcation. People need to realize that you can be somewhere. And it's not being a fence sitter. It's not saying like, oh, well, Israel didn't have the right to retaliate. Listen, Israel has the right to retaliate. But blowing up churches, even Charlie Kirk is starting to realize, hmm, Maybe this is not what uh, the war is about. And we're going to find out what it's about because uh, we're going to see exactly what the movement looks like. We're going to see what the pro-Israel and pro-Hamas movements look like in Western countries. We're going to start there. And then we're going to develop into looking at why this war is escalating, why Israel is withholding a ground invasion, and what they're not telling us and where this is going to lead. Uh, but first, I want to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's show, guys. You know, if you are uh, over 25 years old, you're losing your energy, you've tried, uh, you know, coffee, but it makes you jittery. Like I can only have one cup of coffee at a time. And, uh, and you know, maybe you tried energy drinks, they don't do it for you. Well, this is a, a brand new supplement that is extremely effective and bringing back the energy that you need. It's also been shown to extend the life of uh, other animals when it was tested, which is actually really cool. Uh, what this is, it's called My Vital C. It's got two main ingredients as well, which is olive oil and ESS60, which allows it to, uh, which is systematically stirred in a dark and controlled room temperature with inert buffer gas. Basically, it's GMO-free olive oil sourced from olive orchards around the world, and the product helps bring that focus, energy, and better sleep. So if you've been lacking focus and you feel like you've been in a fog brain, if you feel like you've just been feeling lethargic and you need to pick me up, maybe you have been having restless sleep and you need some sleep, um, you know, you got to check this out. Go to myvitalc.com slash offensive. That's M-Y-V-I-T-A-L-C.com slash offensive. Links in the description. Use my promo code offensive for $15 off your first order. I encourage you to check it out. Check out the website. Read all about it. Uh, it's really absolutely amazing. It's a great product. Many of you guys have found it to be helping you specifically in the sleep uh, factor, which already gives you more energy. But I encourage you to check it out today. Go to myvitalc.com slash offensive, promo code offensive for $15 off. Okay, so like I mentioned, right, the world has gone mad. The last time we were talking, if you just joined the live stream, was how uh, everybody thought that uh, that Greta Thunberg putting a plushy toy of an octopus was anti-Semitism. And because they said that it represented the octopus that had its tentacles in every institution in the world. And that's why I, I'm going crazy. Because like I mentioned, you know, maybe some of you guys are anti-Israel, but I'm not. But even if you question U.S. involvement in Israel, the right wing destroys you. And even they'll call you anti-Semitic, right? I mentioned I've been unfollowed by a few people, including Dave Rubin and others uh, like him over my stance on, on Israel. They just completely just unfollowed me on social media. And I find that to be really interesting because... Israel is like the transgenders of the right wing, right? With the left, they have trans. And anytime you like even just say, hey, maybe transgenderism isn't, like maybe we shouldn't be giving hormones to four-year-olds, you know? Maybe we shouldn't be giving double mastectomies to 12-year-olds. 
they immediately accuse you what? Of being transphobic, anti-gay, a bigot, hateful. And that's the same thing the right wing does on Israel. You go, hey, maybe we shouldn't be involved in this war. Maybe Israel's not our greatest ally. Maybe this is conflict is dangerous. Maybe we can't afford another proxy war uh, while our homeland is falling apart. And they go, no, we have to go to war with Israel. Did you not see the octopuses, you know, paragliding into to, to Israel and killing all the Jews or, you know, Hamas, right? These, these, uh, these, these octopus, they're just, they're just real anti-Semitic and they're waging war and they just feed you propaganda and they get mad at you. But the thing is, I feel like I've been right from the very beginning on this. This was a bad idea. And a lot of my colleagues have been extremely uh, not good um, on this matter. Uh, but this is where it's leading us. So the war is actually cranked up. And I want to bring this up here. Uh, intelligence shows that Iranian-backed militias are ready to ramp up their attacks against U.S. forces in the Middle East. Now, we are obviously not in a direct conflict with Iran, like the U.S. and Iran are not fighting each other, but the U.S. is already engaging militarily Iranian-backed militants, and Iranian-backed militants are attacking U.S. bases uh, in Iraq and Afghanistan, I think in Iraq and Syria, maybe not Afghanistan. And to the extent that uh, Joe Biden had to leave the, the, the podium today or the lectern because our bases were under attack. Now, this is a huge deal because, once again, why are we in the Middle East? Why do we have bases there to begin with? And why is our military off the, the, the coast of Israel intercepting missiles? It's just driving me nuts. So let's uh, get into this article here. And uh, let me see if I can make this bigger. Let me see. Can I? There you go. Okay. Let's go ahead and let's make this bigger. Okay, so CNN says the U.S. intelligence <clears throat> that Iranian-backed militia groups are planning to ramp up attacks against U.S. forces in the Middle East as Iran seeks to capitalize on the backlash in the region to U.S. support for Israel, according to multiple U.S. officials. Now, the militia groups have already launched multiple drone attacks on U.S. forces in Iraq and Syria, and the U.S. now has specific intelligence that those same groups could escalate even further as the war between Israel and Hamas continues. There are red lights flashing everywhere. A U.S. official in the region told CNN, officials said that at this point, Iran appears to be encouraging the groups rather than explicitly directing them. One official said Iran is providing guidance to the militia groups that will not be punished by not getting resupplied with weaponry, for example, if they continue uh, to attack the U.S. or Israeli targets. On Monday, National Security Council spokesperson John Kirby said that there is a very direct connection between these groups and the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps, and he said the U.S. is deeply concerned about the potential of any significant escalation of these attacks in the days ahead. A senior, uh, a senior defense uh, official echoed that concern on Monday. So the U.S. is already engaging in these proxy wars with these militants, and this is a massive escalation. Because why are we even there? Well, obviously we're there because of the remnants of Iraq and Afghanistan, also our drone strikes from the CIA in Syria and in Yemen, right? We've been destabilizing the area. That's not also to include Libya and Egypt are involved in there in uprisings. But uh, we've, we've had an issue in there. But we have escalated our military presence. And why? Is it because it advances the U.S. interests? Is it because it's doing something for our country? No, it's because it, it's doing what Israel wants us to do. And if you question that, then you're an anti-Semite. You hate Jewish people. It's ridic It's like one of the most ridiculous things. And I cannot believe I've lost friends over this, being like, hey, have we not learned from Afghanistan? Did we not learn from Iraq? Did we not learn recently from Ukraine? This does not end well. And if you want to ask how this ends, uh, my buddy Josh Lakash. Uh, he's also on Censored TV. You can find him there on uh, Censored. He basically brought up this video uh, that was showing a problem that our that our government has. And I need to bring up an actual tab here. Um, let me go to a Chrome tab. Here we go. Let's go. Uh, we're bringing this up here. This is what's going on in our military. And this is the exact condition our military is in as we are thinking about sending troops to the Middle East again. Find enough humans. To appeal to Gen Z, the army is pumping out TikTok style get ready with me videos like this. I'm gonna show you my daily hair and makeup routine as well as discuss some of the updated army grooming standards. 
but it's hardly working. I mean, only 800 people saw that video on Go Army's YouTube channel. The U.S. Army had its most difficult recruiting year since it ended the draft in 1973. The U.S. military is even going to esports and mom influencers trying to convince you to join. Influencers are not telling them to go into the military. Moms, dads, uncles, coaches, pastors do not see it as a good choice. But what does all of this mean for the world's most powerful country? The military fell short of its recruitment goals by over 60,000 recruits in 2022. This is the first time the military missed its recruitment goals in more than a decade. And just look at these numbers. The number of people who have joined the military each year has declined by more than 20% since 2010. The average age of a new recruit is 20 years old. It used to be 18 just a few years ago. And the military is having a harder time recruiting people from certain demographics like women and minorities. Yeah, women and minorities, because we really need black people and women to fight our battles for us. Okay, so number one, it's it's incredibly insane that we are stoking escalatory actions in a region in proximity to our greatest enemies, while our military is short by over 60,000 recruits. It, it's proven that it doesn't really matter what technology you have in the end. The amount of troops on the ground, you still can win, right? This is what always been Russia's um, MO, is they just sacrifice troops. And America doesn't have the manpower. We don't have the right amount of people fighting uh, in our military. People don't want to fight in our military. Now, why is that? Why don't people want to fight? Well, I can think of a few reasons. Because there's no country to fight for, right? There's absolutely no nation. There's no identity. It doesn't matter. A good example uh, would be this video here. I'm going to bring this up. I asked a real question. I said, you know, how are we going to solve this issue? Because when you look around the country everywhere, this is what you see in our cities, right? You walk into a store, you go to buy socks, and this is what you see every single every single day on Twitter. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God, this is crazy. <laughs> now people come to steal everything and go for around. Um, Wow, this is crazy. Uh, guys, this is crazy. Yeah, okay, on Instagram, uh, don't fuck with me. Oh my god. <laughs> um, okay, so they're getting so brazen that the young scholar, right, this very young young intelligent man says directly here's my instagram uh don't fuck with me he's plugging his social media so when you're a young white guy right who have historically fought our battles i like myself uh, i'm not young anymore i'm 30 now but i was young when i started this when you tell young white guys hey why don't you fight for your country look when you can't even fight inside of your country for your own property when we've demonized uh, accountability. What country are you fighting for? Like, what is the point of going to war? Now, that's not the only aspect, right? Because this idea, it's so funny, the same right-wing people who are pro-Israel regularly call me racist for just be saying, hey, black people, maybe you should take accountability uh, and we should figure this out because black people are literally ruining our cities. And it's to such an extent that why, though? It's like it's like I don't just blame, obviously, the black people themselves because American cities are falling apart because they are being allowed to fall apart. Somebody who actually uh, spoke about this, if you remember the El Salvadorian president, um, I think his name is uh, Nayib Bukele, he talked about this. He's from El Salvador, a, uh, a third world country, and discussed why America is falling apart and why he believes it's falling apart. Listen to this. This is absolutely amazing. I, I, I really do love this because he, I agree with him is that there is a intentional destruction of our country from the inside and that black people, they're, they're basically as destructive as you allow them to be right. So when you don't allow any accountability, they don't have fathers in the home. They uh, are tribal mentality. They, um, they, they, you know, a lot of them are very uneducated, very poor. There's a lot of issues that go involved with it. There's some that I can't talk about on YouTube. But, I mean, even, even the president of a third world country admits, watch this, that he thinks that the United States is being torn apart internally, intentionally. Uh, the demise of the U.S. has to come from within. Right? The enemies have to be inside. 
not not really outside no 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 external enemy can, could can cause so much damage as internal as an internal operation and you're here, you're watching internal operations here you you can see them in the in cities cities that were pristinely beautiful 30 years ago are wastelands right now you would see people i mean i'm from el salvador third world country in central america and myself i can see cities here and say i don't want to i want to live here so that, that would be unthinkable three decades ago totally unthinkable that a salvadoran wouldn't want to live in a u.s city in a u.s main city i mean los angeles San new york Francisco, chicago yeah well uh, philadelphia baltimore when you look how the cities are eroding so fast this has to be by design i mean who, who i mean who would make so many stupid decisions like okay we're gonna we're gonna give you money for drugs but really they're doing that in some cities they're giving people drugs i mean they're literally giving people drugs in some u.s cities so this is the president of el salvador right literally going the united states is currently at war with itself okay it's genuinely at war internally with itself and some people say look i i would love to know chat i can't see your chat today like i mentioned i am i am on medication I, I i literally couldn't walk for the first few hours of the day until about an hour ago till my i took some pretty heavy medication to be able to do this um show because it's been so painful and i've just not been able to to get my thoughts in order but but uh so i'm in my house and i still look at this and i go yes the us is under attack internally because when we see those kids acting like that, well, who's allowing this to happen? It's actual politicians, it's laws. You know, Israel saw that Eritreans and Sudanese were acting up inside of their country. You know what Israel did? They expelled them. They're banning 20,000 African migrants. You know why? Because they're shitty people. Because multiculturalism doesn't make our countries better. Diversity is not our strength. And I'm not gonna dance around it anymore. You know, it's it's. Oh, is diversity our strength? No, it's not. Okay, diversity is to a nation as polyamory is to a marriage, right? It's like, try date. can you handle your wife now? Try dating six of them. Exactly. It doesn't work. It's hard enough to keep one people group together. And other diversity, I mean, yeah, in every country due to trade and research, there will always be some other races, ethnicities living in a land. I understand that. That's natural. Uh, because some, you know, it'll be a small minority though, and then they will assimilate. It's, they will actually assimilate into the culture. What we have now is just like unfettered mayhem and chaos. And even the, the president of a third world country who admits his country is third world says, I don't want to live in U.S. cities because they're shit. And they're shit. And as, right, as, we, as we know that, as we live in that, guess what? We're sending, I think, $10 billion to Israel. Okay, we are saying $10 billion to Israel. So why don't people sign up for the military? Why doesn't anybody want to join the military? Well, it's pretty simple. What the fuck is the point of joining the military? What am I fighting for? Have you thought about that? You know, uh, a good friend of mine, Owen Schroyer from uh, Infowars. Gosh, I love that guy so much. And I, I you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't almost cry today, but I genuinely am, am heartbroken. Because, so you want to ask why people don't fight for this country? Uh, Owen Schroyer is about to be put in jail. And I, I kid you not, we're going to talk about this here for a second. Uh, he's about to be put in jail. I think he might even be on his way there um, right now or might even already have checked himself. And I, I, I have to see. I gotta. I need to uh, check my, my DMs. I'm on a different time zone. Um, you know, he's getting put in prison for his speech. He yelled 1776 uh, in front of the Capitol. He didn't commit any crimes. And the government said that 1776 was a call to violence and it deserved two months in prison, in high max security prison. Like, I just saw the FBI's hate symbols released, and the Betsy Ross flag was on there. The Gatson flag was on there. Uh, they even said revolutionary war imagery, like pictures of George Washington. Like, they've said our founding fathers, referencing our founding fathers is extremism. So don't, don't mind me if I'm not going to encourage my son to fight in that war. Don't mind me if I'm not going to join the battle and fight in these fight in these wars. I'm not going to be doing that. Listen to what Owen said. This is Owen Schroyer. He's literally going to prison 
for free speech. Listen to this. Owen Schroyer here, and I am about to turn myself in to be a speech prisoner in Biden's America. Unfortunately, we knew that things would get this bad. Unfortunately, we knew the Democrats were this corrupt. And now I have to hit the front lines and be a speech prisoner in Biden's America. And as I go, I am currently involved in litigation to try to get my original Twitter account back at All I Do Is Owen, where I had over 300,000 followers, but I've been censored there for years. So in the meantime, while I'm away, I've launched this Twitter account at Owen Schroyer 1776. It's actually run by a media team. It's not run by me, but my media team who will be giving you updates while I'm incarcerated, daily updates while I'm incarcerated, sharing old video clips, new video clips, and as well as phone audio recordings and maybe even live recordings while I'm away. So please follow this account at Owen Schroyer 1776 for updates while I'm away and spread this video far and wide to let others know, hey, Owen Schroyer is back on Twitter right here at Owen Schroyer 1776. And that year, 1776, is extremely important, not just because it was the founding year of our country, but the U.S. government is arguing that it's illegal for me to say 1776 in Washington, D.C. Don't believe me? Check the U.S. government sentencing memo for yourself. They said that me chanting 1776 in Washington, D.C. is worthy of 60 days in prison. So yeah. it's Owen Schroyer, 1776. Okay, so exactly. So Owen Schroyer is being put into prison for invoking the year that our country was founded. Uh, and you want to know why people that look like this, why young strapping white men, right, Brad Pitt doppelgangers, somehow won't be encouraging their children to fight for a rogue regime? Yeah, we're their enemy. I'm not going to fight in a military that wants me dead. That, that cares more about Jews than Christians, that cares more about black people not being uh, stereotyped and, you know, or having their microaggressions than solving the crime issue and the homicide issue. Like, excuse me, sincerely, but, you know, you can shove up your, your, your agenda up your ass and you can have it served to you because I'm, this is not a country I'm dying for. And you probably feel the same way. I want to show you this because, like, look, I can't, I'm never going to show you guys my son fully, but look at these legs. Come on, look at that. Look at that. Boom. Look at those legs. That. Okay. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Keza just walked back in the door. I'm not sending him. I'm not sending my son to go die in a war. Okay. Maybe a revolution if it needed to happen. But even then, you can't even talk about a revolution without being seen as a criminal these days. That's just problematic. It's, it's totally an issue. He's going to prison for invoking the year our country was founded. No one's going to fight for that country. I'm sorry. You know, and what I think is crazy is I can speak out against America. This is how fucked up everything is. I'm criticizing the U.S. right now, and nobody calls me anti-American. Nobody questions my patriotism. Nobody says that I'm racist towards American people. Nobody says that I'm uh, you know, a bad person. But if you do the same thing towards Israel, you will be called an anti-Semite. You will be called, you know, might as well, like I said, might as well just join Greta Thunberg, right? And and uh, might as well just, just uh, where is this? Might as well just join Greta Thunberg. And uh, fight with your octopuses, you know, against the Jews while you're at it, because there is no real criticism of, of, of foreign policy. They will go to war with who they want to go to. I mean, they're trying to send another hundred billion dollars right now, another hundred billion dollars, 60 billion dollars to Ukraine. That's fucked up. And I've questioned the Ukraine war. So my colleagues who assume that I'm like a bad guy because I don't want to get involved in this Israel conflict were cheering me on when I was saying that we shouldn't get involved in Ukraine. And, you know, I remember I had colleagues, I worked with people who in the Ukraine war were like, well, they're just trying to protect themselves. Let them protect themselves. And it was like, no, you don't understand war. This is not good. We don't want it. It's, it's not, they're not protecting themselves. They're being lied to. Ukraine is a proxy state. You have to look into the details, the history. It's like, Israel they don't even like Americans and they don't even like Christians. So why we're fighting for this nation while our own country falls apart, that's what makes me angry. 
it makes me mad because that's what makes me angry. And here's what's what, what I think is insane. Like it's the same thing goes with the Ukraine war. People that are, are, are cheering on World War III right now. This is a good example. I don't know if you remember this person. Uh, there was this warrior, right? Who All these like Fortnite characters went to go fight for Ukraine. Do you remember that? Like it, it felt like the weirdest people were supporting the war. It's these FAFO, uh, you know, Reddit people that are like, you know, any any dead Russian is a good Russian, you know, just like this like bullshit. Um, they, they've never experienced a tragedy other than trying to get their blood pressure down, you know, maybe their fedora is dirty and they, you know, they need to clean it off. They have some problems, but they don't understand. So this person, you know, you explain this to me. You're going to a foreign country and you're wearing camouflage, but you have purple hair. You have, why do you have camouflage on? Like, that's just such a LARP, right? Why do you even have it? Well, I'm going to see if I can get this, uh, this video, uh, here. Let me see. Hold up. Let me get this up. Uh, these people are having their world rocked. This is her now. Okay, I'm gonna bring this up. This is uh, this is her now. Okay, I'm gonna bring this up. Check this out. Yeah, you need to do a cool and never good at the moment. You put this up so that they can be the only young and now it just to be no, 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 it just. За декілька годин ми втратили стільки побратимів, що за все за чотири місяці я стільки не втрачала. Yeah, yeah, but you know that that turned real quickly, right? I mean, that was like. That was like real fast. We went from, you know, this, oh, I'm going to fight in the war. You know, we got to Slava Ukraini. And then real fast, you find out, do you know how many hundreds of thousands of people have died because everyone wanted to be the good guys and defend against, you know, Russia? It's like, and I was yelling from the beginning, not a good idea, not a good idea. Okay. It just is not a good idea. Uh, and it's not a good idea now. We're going to talk more about this because this is pretty freaking insane. Uh, but I do want to give a huge shout out to one of our sponsors for today, guys. I want you to see this new one uh, about liver health. Now, obviously, you know, you know, there's been times in my life where I drank a lot. Maybe you have. Maybe you've taken a lot of medication. Even the medication that I'm on today, of course, is harsh on your uh, liver. And uh, this is why I have this new product. So if you want to start taking care of your liver now more than ever, you need to listen up because the latest data from the American Heart Association indicates that adults with fatty liver were 3.5 times more likely to have heart failure than those without. So this is really important to taking care of your heart, especially if you got vaccinated or whatever would have happened. Uh, the American Liver Foundation says that 100 million Americans have fatty liver, which means many people are at risk. This includes your diet, right? We throw everything at our livers, cholesterol, alcohol, toxins, Tylenol, statins, cigarettes. And that's why so many of us have sluggish, fatty liver that makes us gain weight and, of course, lose energy. For decades now, your liver helped you and over five uh, with over 500 key functions every day. Now it's time to help your liver back. If you've been worried about this, genuinely check out this product. There's a solution I recommend, particularly Liver Health Formula. It's an all-natural supplement which contains 12 clinically proven botanicals and helps recharge and protect your liver. It's manufactured right here in the USA. You can try Liver Health Formula and receive a free bottle of nano-powered omega-3 to keep your heart healthy right now. Check it out. Uh, go to the site right here, getliverhelp.com slash offensive. Use my promo code offensive to unlock your offer today. Take back control of your health, lose weight, detox your liver, and improve ingestion. If you're a drinker, a smoker, or you eat an unhealthy diet, pick yourself up a bottle of this. Uh, it is also promoted by a lot of other uh, big shows that are out there as well, and their audiences love that. They are now, they are now a new partner of this show uh, and are trying to help you take back control of your liver. Go to getliverhelp.com slash offensive, G-E-T-L-I-V-E-R-H-E-L-P.com slash offensive. Link is in the bio. Okay, like I mentioned, so the war isn't good, right? It's not good. Now, people are like, well, you know, hey, we should uh, we should really, 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 really uh, fight for, uh, for we should be fighting for uh, uh, for Israel. And I want to remind people, you know, just because I'm a, I don't want to fight for Israel does not mean that I'm I'm uh, at all pro uh, I'm at all pro Hamas. Uh, let's look at a little bit about what's been going on here with their protests. 
right? I, I, I mean, honestly, to me, the Hamas protests resemble BLM. And like, this was like a Jewish man that was at this uh, Palestine, uh, free Palestine. This is just like BLM. And so I, I think a lot of people on the right wing do a great disservice to where they're like, well, I think Israel is not really our greatest ally. I think that we shouldn't be involved. So then I'm going to become a, a Hamas propagandist. Look, you can defend the people of Palestine. You can defend Palestinians. You can speak out against war crimes. But you should also speak out against innocent Israelis that are killed too. Yes, I know there's land grabs and both sides say that there are no innocents. I'm not, I'm not involved. I don't, I'm not ethnically involved in this conflict. So I'm not pro Hamas. I'm not pro Israel. Um, but I, you know, this war is not our war and it's coming to our streets. And what I think is ironic is, is that everybody seems to care that there are violent minorities in America now that Jews are the target, right? BLM was a year of anti-white violence. It was anti-white hatred. They hate white people and nobody cared. Literally nobody cared. I think I have a, I have some examples here. So you remember the ADL? The ADL uh, particularly said that the South African song that was from the uh, Economic Freedom Fighters, right? The Malema uh, in South Africa. You guys know there's a lot of violence against uh, white people down there. Well, they had said they had a song called Kill the Boer. And of course, the ADL and everybody was like, oh, you don't take the song seriously. It's not a big deal. Because why? Because Boers are Caucasian. They are white. And nobody, they don't want you to care when white people die. It's, it's, de, it's part of the decolonization agenda. The reason why they don't care when white people die, if you've ever been wondering this, it's about revenge on white people. And who's behind it? I'm not entirely sure yet. I have my suspicions. But I know that it's an anti-white propaganda. And they tell you, it's just a song. It says, kill the Boer. They don't mean it literally. You know, it's like, it's just a joke. They're joking. It's a joke. But then they come out with a tweet today saying, uh, you know, right here, that there is nothing wrong with what Hamas did. And of course, now the ADL and all of the Internet is super upset because, uh, you know, dead Jews, that's where you cross the line. Dead white people, uh, it's part of the decolonization agenda. And it's really ironic to me because. Like this group, we were we were tell like we were explained to people, hey, maybe we shouldn't let a bunch of Arab Palestinians and Sudanese and all of these shit countries immigrate into our nations. We don't want them living on our streets. Uh, maybe Black Lives Matter is not a good organization. Maybe black people are not the solution to the country's problems. Maybe they're part of the problem. And everyone's like, ah, oh, stop it. You're just racist. You just don't, you're just racist against those blacks, Elijah. You're just a racist, racist guy. And I'm like, I, well, I mean, what is your definition of racism? Like, I mean, I don't want black people to burn down my cities. That's racism. And they're like, yeah, that's racist. I'm like, all right, I guess I'm racist. And then I'm like, hey, um, you know, in South Africa, there's like, there's like actual targeted racial cleansing of people who share our Western values. Maybe we should immigrate them over to our countries instead of, Palestinians like, no, no, it's all fake. Let's bring the Palestinians over because multiculturalism is good. Then Palestinians start beating up Jews and there's all these massive free Palestine rallies in the U.S. Polls come out showing that like less than one third of Gen Z uh, even supports Israel existing as a nation. And they're like, wait a second, maybe diversity wasn't our strength because it's hurting our Zionist are, we wanted to be Zionists. And it's like, dude, that's when you care? Fuck off. Like, seriously, that's when you care? You, you're you mad at the South African, you know, uh, uh, South African, what is it? It's like one of the largest parties out there, too. Over millions of people are a part of it. You're mad at them because they are cheering on the deaths of Jews. That's But you didn't think that to, to call them out when they were calling out white people? So you deserve this. You deserve this. You double speak left wing psychopaths for being fucking retarded 
for multiple years, decades, I should say, that everything that we warned you about, every single thing, we warned you. And then BLM goes, oh, we support Hamas. And they're like, wait a second. I love watching Jake Tapper and CNN. They're like, maybe BLM weren't the good guys. And you're like, no, duh. No, duh. Oh, maybe we shouldn't have brought in a bunch of people from third world countries. And we should have like thought about the values of the people we brought into our nation because they don't support Israel like the elites. And you're like, I mean, yes, that's not what I, that wouldn't be one of the criteria that I would put on them, but this is what it took. It took the targeting of a small country of like 9 million people and a small minority in our country for people to realize that, that it all is lost. And then we start giving money and then they're like, wait a second, our military isn't even ready to fight a war with Iran. Yeah, because like the president of El Salvador said, you fucked up the country. It, what do you think, what have you been doing for the last five years on this show? literally categorizing and in, in cataloging the decline of the country. It's literally insane. But, you know, then they go out there. Uh, I kind of want to bring up, let me see if I can, if I have, uh, if, if I even have this, um, you know, I see some of these protests, like I said, these Hamas protests, and it does remind me of BLM. Check this out. Uh, I'm just going to go to my, my, my uh, screen here. So, like these are protests, right? They're protesting all over the country. And like check Everybody hold the Maybe come on. I'm right here. I know. Yeah. Does this look familiar to you? Blocking the roads. Uh, this old white guy tried to drive. Like he got surrounded. He tried to drive. They tried to pull him out of his car and kill him. Uh, then they started releasing, you know, lies. Journalists started saying that he fired shots and tried to kill the protesters. Like, guys, you don't want to be a retarded Zionist shill, but don't also be a retarded Hamas shill either. Because some of y'all are just like, your dislike of one group is blinding you to the nature of the other group. And it's the same thing for people that are, like I said, if you're blindly supporting Israel because you just hate Hamas and, and Palestinians, you're just as stupid for supporting Hamas. People go, well, Hamas is a resistance group that was born out of, you know, a struggle against Israel. And, you know, we really got to support them because they're a really good group. Okay, well, let's talk a little bit about how uh, Hamas uh, got started, right? Let's watch an older video here um, from Ron Paul, which was how, let me see if I can find it here. Um, wow, do I not have it here? Um, yeah, let me actually look at, actually, I'm going to have to actually pull up this, this, uh, this, this video. Um, but Ron Paul explains this from many decades ago. I'm going to see if I can get my thing to even load here for a second. Ron Paul explains how, how, uh, Hamas even started. And it's an older video and I find it to be really interesting because it's super important to understand context and history when we're talking about these things. And let me see if I, do I have it? Wow. I don't know. I don't know what happened to it. It was in my, uh. It was in my thing, but I guess I don't have it. Okay, that doesn't really matter. We won't watch that. But I want to bring up this. This was really important to me. Uh, this was the idea of, look, in our countries, we have a bigger, we have a bigger battle. Right here in uh, England, at a free Palestine rally, they were warning people about flying the English flag. So in England, they were worried about people flying the English flag in England. Because the, they might feel like it's racist. The police, the UK is just, it's just so sad what's happened to it. Look at this. Check this out. It's now considered racist to fly your own country's flag in the UK. For the moment, anything racist or even close no, to racism no, is right. said. No, right. no, 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 no,
for the moment. Yeah. So they immediately stopped them because the police were like, hey, you're flying in an English flag at a Palestinian rally. You do know that England has been conquered by Muslims. You can't just fly the old flag. You can't just fly your nation's flag. That's what I'm trying to say. We've been warning people that this is going to end in disaster, just importing the third world. And they didn't care. They actually did it intentionally, like the El Salvadorian president said. And the reason why I don't care about this is because it's like I care about this because it's my people, my land, my history. This is my, my identity as a human being. And our politicians prove that they've been complicit in the hatred of white people for this entire time because it took the persecution of Jews for them to give a damn. That's why I don't give a shit because they didn't care when it affected me and my family and my children. And now they want me to care when it affects us, another country. Sorry, I don't care. Okay. And I have plenty of, I have plenty of, of Jewish friends who, who view the exact same way that I do. I have Jewish family. They think the same way I do. Here's what happened. Even Nikki Haley, right? was like, no more federal money for colleges and universities that allow anti-Semitism to flourish on campus. She wants to cut off funding at colleges for people that don't like Jews. Now, do I think it's, it's, a fa it's really good for people to walk around, you know, just trying to make other students feel unsafe on campus or talk about, you know, this... No, but this is going to be really controversial and I'm going to get in trouble for this, but I don't care anymore. I don't care. I just don't care because I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to like lie or lie by not telling the full truth. Look, Nikki Haley only cares because she's getting bankrolled for this and that she has friends who are, and there's, there's deep connections. Okay. Israel lobby has deep pockets, but on American college campuses, they've been targeting white straight men for a long time. They have classes about erasing whiteness, defeating, decolonizing whiteness. She's never called for the defunding of schools, for them attacking white people who are the majority in this country, but it took the, the anti-Semitism for her to really care. And that's what's so crazy. It's like, well, I don't think you give a shit. I don't think you care, I don't think you care at all. Like, I, 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 I don't think people, I don't want, you know, Jewish people to feel unsafe on college campuses. I don't like that. But I've been on college campuses and I've been rejected and I've had problems even when I was in college over a decade ago um, for being white. And no politician stood up for me. The only person who kind of spoke for me was Trump back in 2016. And even after we put Jared Kushner and other advisors, he lost a lot of his uh, fighting for the, the, the disenfranchised white male. Now, what I think is crazy, not all of you guys are white or men that watch this, but you do know that there has been an attack on that. And also Asians too. Come on, where are my Asians? Uh, you guys have been getting discriminated against just one major victory as a Supreme Court against affirmative action. They've been discriminated against Asians for a long time. Plus the stop Asian hate, black brothers were just knocking the shit out of Asians all over the place. And nobody seemed to even really care about finding the solution to that. They still blamed white people. But you know what's so crazy is I noticed, I noticed this is, oh, this is what I'm in trouble for. I don't know if I should say it. Let me see the chat real fast. I don't know if I should go down this rabbit hole. I don't know if I should. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe we will. Maybe we'll go down this rabbit hole here for a second. Uh, basically, what I, I saw this video of these uh, Jewish girls crying to this police officer uh, because there was this rally, this free Palestine rally. And Turning Point had shared it and a few organizations had shared it and they were crying or like, to the police, like, please don't let Palestinians protest on our campus. We feel unsafe. We feel threatened. Like, I think I showed it on the show, too. I might even showed the clip. And I said, yeah, that's not good, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, you don't want to feel unsafe, which is true. But it kind of sounds like the transgender Antifa protesters, like what they say when, like, Matt Walsh, speaks on campus. You know, like how Matt Walsh will speak and they'll be like, his presence is a threat to our community. He wants us dead. His words are violence. He, 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 he's, he's, he's trying to wipe us off. And the right wing mocks them. And they're like, oh, you thin skinned snowflakes, you fucking retards, you know, you losers. And they're like, ha ha ha. And making fun of all these transgenders and all these Antifa and Antifa folk. 
And they're like, you, oh, you're offended by the presence. You can't take a little criticism. I mean, even Michael Knowles said that we got to eradicate transgenderism. Pretty extreme rhetoric. I agree with it. Uh, but I could see how one might feel threatened by that, right? I know he didn't say eradicate transgenders, but eradicate transgenderism on a college camp, I mean, at CPAC. And then and, and they, they cry. And what does Charlie Kirk do? What does Daily Wire do? What does Ben Shapiro do? What does Nikki Haley do? We laugh at them. Fox News, Jesse Waters, everyone's like, losers. But then turn the tables and uh, instead of it being transsexuals, Jewish people are all of a sudden like, oh, any criticism of the war makes us feel unsafe. It's anti-Semitic. I can't associate with you. Literal snowflakes, like just like Antifa and the queers. It's the same shit. So like they, and because I watched people being like, this should be illegal. And Nikki Haley like, you should not be allowed to speak out against Israel. Well, yeah, you should. Because if you can't speak out against Israel, then you can't speak out against transgenders either. Like if we're going to start outlawing who you can speak out against, then there's no end in sight. And they're willing. This is what's crazy. Not only are they willing to sacrifice your actual blood, they are willing to sacrifice you specifically uh, and your children's blood for their wars. But they'll also sacrifice all of your liberties, right? As we saw with the January 6th stuff. They, and they, they don't mind lying. Um, like, for instance, uh, a family member sent me this. They were like, dude, Jews are under attack in the U.S. You know, uh, this girl was just killed in front of her house because she was a Jew. And I go, oh, that's horrible, right? But just like the beheaded babies, Detroit police say there's no evidence to suggest the death of Samantha Wool was motivated by anti-Semitism. First of all, she looks oddly similar to uh, the character from, from Seinfeld. But realistically speaking, it's like, this is like the beheaded babies thing. I mean, I don't want anybody getting killed, but they don't even have a suspect from my understanding. This got shared around that a Jewish woman got killed for being Jewish in front of her office or her land. And I've seen this story shared by people that are very reputable. Uh, and it turned out the police said, I don't know where that came from, but it didn't. It, we don't have any evidence. Now, it could change. And I'm not saying it, it wasn't anti-Semitism. It could have been. But there's this like desire. There's some weird desire that they're doing where it's like, dude, you know how many white people have been killed by black people for being white? Do you know how many times like white, there's been like multiple times in the last recently that black people motivated that they just wanted to go out and kill a white person. And that doesn't even make the news. Uh, you're not even supposed to care. And if you bring it up, you might be racist. You might be racist. Now, I know that I'm ranting a little bit. Uh, I know that I'm ranting a little bit, but but I, I, I'm I not able to stream as much right now. Like, again, I'm, I'm going to go straight from here. I have to go to the doctors. I have to go get more scans and stuff um, because because I'm having a really tough time. I have some days I can't walk, you know, and sometimes I can't walk. Uh, and I, it's just not good. It's not good. Something's really wrong. I really hurt something badly. Um, and uh, I didn't even want to take medication today because it changes my personality and I don't like it, but I took it for you guys because I love you guys and I want to, to tell you the truth. And I've decided this show is going to be better from now on because, you know, as I was just kind of like lulling a little bit and just like playing videos, I'm done. I'm done like holding back, right? We're just going to be completely unleashed going forward. We're going to be completely unleashed no matter what. It's just, we're not going to be sitting on the fence. We're not going to be doing this shit. Uh, but it's like, I just find that to be the double standard. Um, I think I'm going to bring up like two more things. Ah, I found it. Okay. So yeah, I have the video of Ron Paul here. Um, explain. So if you didn't know this, this is why I don't, don't listen to people when they tell you, oh, well, Israel's got to, you know, defeat Hamas. Well, if they wanted to defeat Hamas, they uh, shouldn't have basically created Hamas. Listen to this. This is absolutely amazing. Check this out. What's happening in the Middle East, in particular with Gaza right now, we have some moral responsibility for both sides uh, in, in a way because we provide help and funding uh, for both Arab nations and Israel. And uh, so we definitely have a moral responsibility, and especially now today, the weapons being used to uh, kill so many Palestinians are American weapons, and uh, American funds essentially are being used uh, for this. But there's a political liability, which I think is something that we fail to look at because too often there's so much blowback from our intervention in areas that we shouldn't be involved in. You know, Hamas, if you look at the history, you'll find out that Hamas was encouraged and really started by Israel because they wanted Hamas 
to counteract Yasser Arafat. And he said, well, yeah, that was better then and served his purpose, but we didn't want Hamas to do this. So then we as Americans say, well, we have such a good system, we're going to impose this on the world. We're going to invade Iraq and teach people how to be Democrats. We want free elections. So we encourage the Palestinians to have a free election. They do, and they elect Hamas. So we first indirectly and directly through Israel help establish Hamas. Then we have election. Then Hamas becomes dominant, so we have to kill them. You know, it, it just doesn't make sense. During, during the 80s, uh, you know, we were allied with Osama bin Laden, and uh, we were con contending with the Soviets. It was at that time our CAA thought it was good if we radicalized the Muslim world. So we financed the madrasa schools to radicalize the Muslims in order to compete with the, with the Soviets. There's too much blowback. There's a lot of reasons why we should oppose this resolution. It is not in the interest of the United States. It's not in the interest of Israel either. All right. So he was pretty clear there. Uh, the U.S. and Israel, you can look at the whole history. I mean, is, is there a terrorist organization we didn't start? Uh, ISIS, you know, uh, Al-Qaeda. Um, even we've recently just armed the Taliban. We armed the Taliban as well during the 80s against Russia, uh, ISIL. Um, I mean, is there, I mean, besides Hezbollah, right, maybe in some of these other groups that are more armed by Iran, but then where did Iran get the recent money to arm these terrorist groups? It was from the U.S., from the Biden administration. What you're seeing is regime foreign policy. It's just absolutely insane. It is, it, it's like, it's maddening. And so what I'm hoping to do now with, with my live streams, I will be continuing to live stream. We're going to keep coming together. We're going to keep, you know, spreading the truth. We're going to keep being honest about these situations because this is now escalating to the fact that Iran is putting itself at a readiness and a preparedness to go to war with the U.S. The U.S. is sending more battalions. China is sending ships to the sea right now. Uh, the U.K. is. It's basically becoming a powder keg. And Israel has delayed their ground invasion. They have something like 300,000 troops ready to invade. They have tanks along the border. Um, Hamas is planning on trading between five and 50 hostages in exchange for humanitarian aid. They've cut off fuel, food, and water. Uh, it is not a good situation, and it could potentially turn into something. Now, I'm not saying World War III, right? You know those grifters that are always like, it's World War III, it's World War III. I don't know if it's World War III. I, I don't know. And we're not there yet. And I'm not going to use titles like that anymore in my life. And I'm not, it's just like Iran is preparing to attack the U S it's true. I read the article. I saw what the government memo said. That's true. Uh, but we will see is war inevitable. That's the question. I'd love to know your comments below. Um, I really would love to know. Don't forget guys, uh, that this is, uh, a great time to remind you, uh, that if you do care about supporting the show, and I mean, I mean, genuinely about this, you can see how much, uh, I mean, like, I, I think anybody in this condition and on this kind of medication wouldn't even be doing a live stream, but I care about you guys and I want to be able to give an honest take because uh, I know there are some people that are really pro-Palestinian, pro-Israel, and I feel like being somewhere in the middle uh, and trying to keep us out of it is not very popular, but you guys continue to support and I appreciate that. But if you guys really want to support the show, remember you can go to MyVitalC or GetLiverHealth.com and get liver supplement or you can get energy, it's in the description. But the really most important way that you can help directly uh, is by getting a membership uh, to censored.tv. So you guys know, you can use my promo code offensive right now, it's 20% off. Um, if you support the show, remember we're demonetized everywhere. We literally just like, and, and like I have lost so many followers, been shadow banned had issues just, I do my, my, my TikTok got deleted yesterday. I know, a fourth account, almost 40,000 followers got deleted. I know why am I on there, but I, we're just always getting deleted, you know? We're always getting censored, and I don't complain about it. I just deal with it now. I, I understand people just hate Christians. They hate white people. They hate truth tellers. Uh, but if you go to censored.tv, that's C-N-S-O-R-E-D.tv, use my promo code OFFENSIVE. Maybe get a membership for your husband, for your family, for your son. Uh, you get a bunch of other shows. And this show is also uploaded there as well, the live streams, and I cut out the commercials. So you get this show commercial free, and then you also get an extra show on Thursday nights. It's a, a different type of show. It's its own show on Thursdays, and um, and it's really great. If I get deleted off anywhere, my stuff is there. So go to censored.tv and check it out. 
Uh, get a membership and join the community. You can always join my locals as well and get in the live chat. I love you guys. I can't see any of the chats uh, here at the moment, but I appreciate it. I'm going to go check out uh, the locals and see if we um, – let me see. Let me see if we uh, got any super chats going on here on Rumble or on uh, on locals, and just see what's what's going on here with the fam. See if we got any Rumble rants or any uh, super chats. Let me see how you guys are doing. What's up, locals? What's up, censored? Uh, you guys are awesome. Let me see. Open chat. Here we go. All right, we got two. We got one uh, here. Let me see. Let me bring this up. I think we can put this up. Uh, I guess. Wait. What the heck? Let me stop. Let me bring this up. There you go. All right. Excellent. That's me in the beginning of the retards taking over. Also, uh, bought a blue octopus in Japan for you. E. It also changes colors to white, which my husband said would be perfect for you. Get well soon. Uh, we'll DM you later. Yes. Deb Step, who bought uh, Charlie, our Down syndrome doll, just got me a racist octopus. That will be on the show. And MJ sent a $20 tip too and said, listening, watching while scrolling Twitter X. Hi, everyone, Elijah. Thank you for doing the show. Get well soon. Thank you, MJ. I really appreciate it. Uh, it means a lot. Uh, thank you guys for watching another episode of Nightly Offensive. This is the best, worst live stream on the internet. My name is Elijah Schaefer. Until then, I will see you next time. Let me go ahead and play a little uh, outro here. I think I have a little outro that I, that I can play. Um, I, again, I'm just recording from my house. So it is what it is. Uh, I'd like to play you a really nice song that, um, that I was, that I found. Let me just bring this up. Here we go. It's a really nice song for my favorite artist and it brings me hope for the future of America. Seven days, you can get the fuck up on my sheet. Hunter, I, hit him with the glove, take the fuck out. Hunter, I, get me in that kid, you won't take it out. Twelve, get behind, we gon' do 